refugees found dead in a truck in Austria, if you can believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, bodies of at least 20 refugees and as many as 50 were found Thursday in a tractor trailer abandoned on the side of the road in eastern Austria near the Hungarian border, according to multiple media reports. The nationalities of the victims were not immediately clear, but Europe has been inundated by a recent flood of refugees from the Middle East and, of course, North Africa, particularly war-torn Syria. Uh, the sand spiders are moving north. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Hans Doskill, chief of the Berglin police, says it's unclear whether the refugees suffocated in transport, as suggested they might have been dead for several days, the Austrian newspaper De Press reported. He said the truck had been there at least since Wednesday, but that police only investigated its contents today, calling the incident a terrible crime. Doskill said that the number of victims could be as high as 50. Nobody wants to go in and start pulling out bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yes, listener, there is indeed... Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yes, that's right. There is indeed a Tim Hortons in Mill Bay. Yes. Yes, there is. <laughs> right beside the, the food store and the traffic light. Geez, actually, you know, now that I think about it, I'm, I'm kind of going back through through uh, driving through Mill Bay in my mind. I think the last time I was there was like 12 years ago. Yes. <laughs> I I think, don't quote me, I'm not sure about this, uh, listener, but I think there is actually also a Burger King. I think, I think there is, I think, yeah. Well, you know, you got to have the, to see that what it is, is that right at the intersection there? Yes. Uh, they've got some Indians that actually sell carvings. Yes. Right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, when lunchtime hits, you know, let's go to the Burger King, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, police spokesman Helmut Marbin said police stopped shortly before noon today. Yeah, today. Jeez. Yeah. So I got the right day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly before noon today, thinking that the park truck had some mechanical trouble, the Associated Press reports, they say they saw blood dripping from the back of the vehicle and noticed the smell of dead bodies. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, the truck was apparently abandoned Wednesday and its back door was left open. Well, at least he was considerate enough to let them air out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, it was all said that the Hungarian license plates uh, and the writing on the side and the back was in Slovakian. The state of the bodies suggested the migrants could have been dead for several days. Police said the investigation could last for days. They declined to give any further information on the victims' possible identities, whether children were among them and how the migrants may have died or any other details. The vehicle was found in the town of Parndorf in the state of Bergland on a road leading from Hungary. The deluge of migrants prompted the country to build a new border fence to keep them out. Oh, look at that! Implementing Trump policy. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> That's right. The truck once belonged to the Slovak chicken meat company Haiza, part of the Agrofert Holding, which is owned by Czech finance minister Andre Babis. Angoford Holding it, it said in a statement that it sold the truck in 2014. Mm, that's pretty much what I'd say, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get a phone call. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, hello, is this uh, Angoford Holding? You'd be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, we found uh, the truck here uh, full of uh, 50 dead bodies. Is it yours? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We sold that last year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the new owners apparently did not remove the truck's logos as required by Haiza and has nothing to do with the truck now, the company added. As one side of the truck has a slogan, Honest Chicken. <laughs> Well, writing on the back says, I taste so well because they feed me so well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, human smugglers are criminals. Interior Minister Johanna Leitner said in a statement, 
And those who think that they are still gentle helpers of refu- refugees that are beyond saving. She said the disaster was a signal to Europe to act as quickly as possible. The latest news came as a summit of European and Western Balkan countries uh, meet to discuss on migration issues, and it's underway in Vienna right now to address the refugee crisis and tackle the problem of human trafficking gangs. Germany has urged all European states to share the burden. A record number of 107,500 migrants crossed the EU's borders last month. And on Wednesday, police counted more than 3,000 crossing into Serbia, the BBC reported. So, you know, th- th- that's what we got. It's, it's all the damned airstrikes. It's pushing all the sand spiders north. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So that's, that's, that's actually good for us to know. Yes. Because now we can start bombing Europe. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, moving on today, we do have techn- Texas news, and I'm I'm really kind of pissed that Sharon's not here because yes. you know I, I know she really enjoys those those Texas gems I bring every day. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she is not in the house today, so uh, we're going to go for our second commercial break. Don't worry, when we come back, we're still going to give you all the Texas news. That's right, front lawn dinosaurs causing a huge stir in a Texas neighborhood. It's going to be fun. We'll be back in two. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where fresh always tastes better. What can I make you this morning? How about our new flatbread breakfast paninis? Made fresh, just for you, with your favorite breakfast ingredients on maple or multigrain flatbread, then grilled to hot, melted perfection. Just $2.99. Who couldn't warm up to that? Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where quality really does meet value. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the best part part was the shower. My My wife wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towel shower curtain to find that whole vacation vacation for her. her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Let's do a brand new day. Let's step away from the bland and let the color fly. Let's get to the one store with more number one choices and match this or this without using too much of this. Then, let's crack open a can and get to it. Paint? No. Let's do POW. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Glidden Duo starts at a new lower price of $25.46 a gallon. Still for a smoother taste. You've got it locked to HCLA Radio 1 New York. Well, um, actually, what uh, shaped my life is uh, what happened to all Japanese Americans uh, during the Second World War. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pearl Harbor was bombed, and overnight, Jap- American citizens of Japanese ancestry were looked at with suspicion yeah. and fear and outright hatred well, simply because we happen to look like the people that bombed Pearl Harbor. Uh, okay, well, let's let's be fair here. Most Americans at that particular point in time didn't know what the Japs looked like. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and of course, you know, once we did, you know, I, I think that was what, the, the 60s? Yes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, cry me a river, George. Uh, don't. Uh, I don't uh, think that that's anything to worry about. Look. He needs love, Chris. Come on. No. 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 
No, the last thing I'm going to do is give George Takei any love unless it's live on the air for ratings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, because I asked him, I said, well, fly out here and I'll film you. Oh, you, you're going to get into gay porn now? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, whatever pays the bills, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got some uh, urination footage you should look at, Louie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, speaking of urination, welcome back to this show. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Of course, this is your Coffee and Cigarettes Thursday Double Double for the 27th of August, 2015 on HTLA Radio 1, New York's Best Talk. And, hey, if you're not there yet, get on over to New York's Best Talk.com and check out that show page. Get in there. Lick it up. Lick it up. <laughs> Taste my salty show. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, there we are, and we are back. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, everywhere. And now uh, it is, yeah. Okay, and you're going to give it to me this time? Actually, going to let me have the goddamn email? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, of course, I'm, I'm talking, of course, about, uh, you know, we're, we're back from commercial segment two. Yes. So that, of course, means we're going to, uh, every time we have George on the show, we, we do have the uh, the daily question uh, for George submitted by you, the listener. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, Kissy is just, I don't know, um, I think she's just, to be honest, pissing around on Facebook. <laughs> <is> what, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to sit here and, and wait until she decides to, to fire that off to me. Yes. So... <laughs> <laughs> so I can actually get along and yeah anything no hurry up and you're listening to HGLA Radio 1 New York there you go I don't know it was a button I hit it <laughs> some old toothless dude reading uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, uh, she's still pissing around. So, uh, George, I don't know, tell us a story. Um, As I uh, mm -hmm. uh, grew up, I made another discovery. Right. There were places called gay bars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny, too. Uh, you you did uh, Star Trek up to the, um, what was it, the sixth one? Uh, I've done uh, Star Trek, uh, right. the uh, series, and... Uh, the movie series up to the sixth one. Oh, okay. So, so the sixth one. Yeah, that that was called Undiscovered Country, I believe. I guess that's a lot like being a homosexual, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Yeah, so you discover gay bars, and that's great. And uh, Jesus Christ, Kissy, send me the damn question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I don't know what she's doing, but uh, I can't uh, yes. I can't wait anymore. So let me just think here. I'll, I'll, I'll think of a question. <sighs> All right, George. Um, uh, how often? How often? When, uh, when, 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 geez, no, that's, that's not a good one either. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, of course, you've had questions all over the place about various cleaning products uh, used during gay sex. So I, I, won't, uh, <laughs> I won't go there. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Just because I can't think of anything else. Here's a nice, simple, straightforward gay question. <laughs> <laughs> how how often do you wake up with a cock in your ass? Every every morning. Okay. <laughs> there you go, gang. Don't say I didn't give you some love and joy. That's right. And uh, it's about fucking time. Move on. Move on. Louis, how often do you wake up in the morning with a cock in your ass? <laughs> My film, Unrepented, did very well in Europe. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> All right, gang. Well, uh, let's uh, move it on today. Of course, the big uh, Texas news, and I see that uh, the ever-stealth Sharon Hundley Chesley is in the uh, live chat room today saying, 
<laughs> yes, uh, one moment. Uh, the HTLA CEO, Kate Taylor, is in the studio with me right now, showing me her new cheetah print shoes. <laughs> Yes, there we go. And you all know my feelings on cheetah print in New Jersey. <laughs> Thank you. Those are, are, are great, Kate. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, and, and, and I haven't been swearing on the show today at all. Yes. <laughs> all right, we're well, moving on now. We get to that Texas story just for that very stealth-like uh, B-1 bomber, Sharon Chesley. Well, uh... We'll get to that right now. Front lawn dinosaurs causing quite the stir in a Texas neighborhood. Yes, a Texas couple is putting the average homeowner's guardian lion statues to shame. Wait a minute. Garden lions? What? <laughs> I was putting those apparently popular lion statues in Texas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> putting them to shame with a prehistoric twist on their lawn. Na- Nancy Henschel and her husband found two metal sculptures of dinosaurs while on vacation in Arizona and decided to bring them home. Hoarders! (laughs) (laughs) This report comes to us, of course, from KTRK-TV. The T-Rex and Velociraptor sculptures sit near the couple's front walkway and appear to lunge at an unseen, unsuspecting victim. Yes! (laughs) Obviously, it does make a little bit of a statement, Henschel told KTRK-TV, and I've met more neighbors in the past 24 hours than I have in the past 17 years living here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, while many appreciate the dinosaurs, some think the quirky lawn art should not be allowed in a planned community of new territory in Sugarland, Texas, where the couple lives. You know, I always thought Sugarland, Texas was where manly men come from, you know? Yes. You know, George, you know that. Right? <laughs> yeah, this is where all the manly men are, Sugarland, baby. But what the hell is this planned community thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, a post on the community's Facebook page encouraged residents to, quote, take a drive down Kendall Creek in Lake Wind. Take a look at the Jurassic Yard before the Homeowners Association succeeds in having the homeowner remove them. Oh, really? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, won't they? Won't they get the shock of their lives? Yes. Won't they get the 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 absolute? Oh my God! What did we do? Let's run away quickly when they realize that the dinosaurs have been put there by Monsanto. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You ain't moving those dinos, chicky. Yes. <laughs> yes, the post added that decorations are, of course, in violation of the deed of restrictions, but they are kind of cool. Kudos to the resident for even thinking of this one, but we will have to fine you $2,500. <laughs> Well, the community, as most of these bloody gated nightmares has, <laughs> has a long list of guidelines that residents must abide by. According to ABC News, the new Territory Residential Community Association's Homeowner's Handbook requires residents to obtain written consent prior to installation of, quote, yard decorations and furniture. Well, no, these aren't yard decorations. Welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> 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 well, KTRK TV reported that HOA is aware, aware of the dinosaurs. Henschel told the station that she was contacted and asked what her plans are regarding the dinosaurs. And she said she's going to contest any request for their removal. Get off my land. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, quote, it's creative and it's creating a real sense of community here, she told KTRK TV. Yeah, well, it is, yes. and uh, shove it up your ass, residents. Uh, <laughs> really? Really, like, like, this is like the whole, oh, I don't know, PC movement. Yes. You know? <laughs> oh, yes, let's, let's take this to the highest court in the land, because this is so damn important. Forget feeding the hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was your Texas update. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, stay tuned for more Texas updates in the coming days. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Yeah. Not... <laughs> nope. <clears throat> Moving along today, Baltimore mayor. Yes, the uh, well, the black lady is coming out on guns, gangs, and homicides. Everything she knows intimately. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Right, she is. This month, Baltimore reached a grim milestone. Of course, more murders were recorded in the Charm City and in the middle of August 2015 than in all of 2014, reversing years of hard-won gains in reducing the city's most violent crimes. In an interview with Capital Download, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake blamed gang rivalries and access to guns for the spike in homicides. Well, at least she acknowledges what it is. <laughs> Yeah, a development that has hit not only her hometown, but also the big cities across the country. As a president of the U.S. Conference on Mayors, she's convinc- uh, convening sorry, a meeting uh, of city leaders in October to discuss what's happening and how to respond. If you look at all the homicide victims, most all of them have had contact with the criminal system. Many have been recently released from jail. They're known to each other, she says. It's a domino thing that we're seeing. They're also all black and a few Chicanos. <laughs> Now, she notes a time, a connection to the death of Freddie Gray, a 25-year-old African-American man who died in police custody in April. Six Baltimore police officers have been indicted on charges related to his death, which sparked riots and marked the start of an abrupt rise in violent crime. The incident has raised tension in the critical relationship between the Baltimore Police Department and the community, she says, making it harder to investigate most crimes. We can't do it alone without the information that helps us to take these violent individuals off the street, she says. We're not going to get where we want to to be as a city unless we do the hard work of repairing that relationship. And to me, that's the critical work that is of the essence right now. The violence has been a test for uh, as well for Rawlings Blake, 45, a rising star in Democratic politics. As Secretary of the Democratic National Committee, she is slated to introduce the 2016 frontrunner Hillary Clinton at the DNC meeting in Minneapolis this weekend. At age 25, she became the young pers- the youngest person ever elected to the Baltimore City Council. Then was elected president of the council. She was sworn in as mayor when her predecessor, Sheila Dixon, resigned in 2010 after being convicted of embezzlement. <laughs> Rawlings Blake, now 45, was elected to the full term in 2011. She is running for re-election next year, and Dixon is among those who plan to challenge her in the Democratic primary. The embezzler is going to try again? (laughs) Really? (laughs) (laughs) Well, the uh, mayor was interviewed for our weekly video newsmaker series at a conference room adjoining her office at City Hall in an ornate Baroque revival structure conducted in the center of town in, in or constructed, I should say, in the center of town in 1875. In the aftermath of Freddie Gray's death, Rawlings Blake fired police commissioner Anthony Batt, set up a war room to deal with the city's increased violence, embedded 10 federal agents in the city's homicide department, and sought other federal aid from the Obama administration. But she heatedly defends her decision to delay for hours, calling in the National Guard, even as street protests turned into rioting and looting. The city had been braced for demonstrations by boisterous teenagers, she said, not a situation that required the National Guard. She says she was concerned about keeping the protests from escalating, perhaps leading to more violence. If the criticism is that I didn't have the National Guard out to put our babies at risk of being killed, I'll take that criticism, she says. Yeah, I will be made vulnerable for it, but I just don't know of many people who think that it would have been appropriate use of force in that situation. After the police officers were un- indicted, arrests in the city plummeted through the... She declines to speculate why, and she says that the evidence suggests the temporary decline in arrest wasn't behind the surge in murders. Many have suggested that the slowdown of arrest after indictment of the officers uh, precipitated this violence... We haven't found that to be the case as yet in the sense that we've seen an incredible increase in the number of arrests. Over 100% increase in the last three weeks in the amount of guns taken off the street, she says. We've taken more illegal guns off the street this year than last year. With all of that activity, we're still here with that surge in violence. The number of murders in Baltimore had dropped to 197 in 2011 lowest since the late 70s. Last year, there was 211 murders, the second lowest since then. 
But so far this year, 215 homicides already have been reported. Violent crime has also risen in other big cities this year, from Houston to Milwaukee and nearby Washington, D.C. At a meeting, she's called for mayors in Baltimore this fall. Rawlings Blake says that they will discuss the need for collaboration with federal government to respond. She says the mayors will also lay out very clearly what we expect as a national agenda for our cities from the 2016 presidential candidates in both parties. And I'm sure those 16 or 22 candidates will listen to her, but Trump's too damn busy. Sorry. (laughs) And speaking of candidates, we actually have today, to close out the show, we actually have the latest in your Scooby-Doo news. (laughs) That's right, we do. Clinton news. Not even kidding. Yes. Do we need the... That's right. We've got Clinton news. That's right. Clinton GOP candidates' views on women is akin to those of terrorists, she says. Hillary Clinton today compared Republican presidential candidates' views on women to those of terrorists in a campaign appearance today in Ohio. Now, extreme views about women? We expect that from terrorist groups. We expect that from people who don't want to live in the modern world, Clinton said in Cleveland. But it's a little hard to take home coming from Republicans who want to be president of the United States. Yet, they espouse out-of-date and out-of-touch policies, she said. They are dead wrong for 21st century America. Like you'd know. (laughs) Well, she said, Jeb Bush opposes Planned Parenthood, which provides reproductive health services to women and has been a target of an outside group that produced undercover videos about its abortion services. She also took aim at Ohio Governor John Kasich and Florida Senator Mark Rubio, who brags about wanting to deny victims of rape and incest access to health care and abortion. The comments drew swift rebuke from Republicans for Hillary Clinton to equate her, well, political opponents as terrorists. It's a new low for her failing campaign, says Allison Moore, the Republican National Committee press secretary, saying in a statement today. She should apologize immediately for her inflammatory rhetoric, bitch. (laughs) Well, Bush slammed Clinton twice on Twitter, saying that uh, she compares pro-life Americans to terrorists while defending Planned Parenthood policies. Her priorities are totally wrong. And she doesn't know what top secret is. Well, Clinton is apparently making women's issues the pillar of her campaign because she doesn't really know much else. (laughs) Of course, that includes focusing on gender inequality issues like equal pay and access to health care, with polls showing her support among men weaker than among women, where she only holds (laughs) 1.2%. Well, she will need a strong showing from both single and married women to become the nation's first female president. Yeah, this is just a pipe dream. Can we stop talking about it now? <laughs> no, I, I'm serious, Gilbert, because, uh, yes. you know, I, I you know, there, there's a lady that lives down the street from me here. Yes. Uh, I don't know, three or four miles. Um, it, she's known in the community as Aunt Millie. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, now, Aunt Millie's a sweet old woman. Yes, you know, and 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 she 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 actually you know does things like actually bakes apple pies, uh, lets them cool in the window. Yes, and uh, she she actually takes them down. She got a little stand by the road, and she actually you know serves you up pieces of pie. And stuff. She doesn't even charge you for this. Yes, <laughs> no. <laughs> right, and Aunt Millie, you know, super sweet lady. Everything else, you know, she she's she's not the smartest tool in the shed. <laughs> You know, <laughs> she's, she's just a nice, personable lady who bakes pies for the community kids and whatnot. And you know what? I'll tell you this. I would much sooner. You know, th- this isn't an issue about putting a woman in the White House. Yes. This is about not putting Hillary in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just is. Because I'll tell you this. I can guarantee you. Yes. I can guarantee you that. Jeez, just just put up a couple of posters around New York City here, around Manhattan. Aunt Millie would get more votes than this idiot. Yeah. <laughs> she, 
she just would. I mean, it's a yeah, it's free pie. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> God, you know, now that I think about it, you know, we put a couple of dollars in Aunt Millie's campaign. She could beat Trump. Yes. <laughs> you know. Well, I'm, he's got he's got to do pie or something. You know. Actually, I think with his net worth, I say he should buy our votes. Twenty thousand bucks a piece. Come on. <laughs> there you go. Well. That is the Boom Boom music for today. We are out of time. I want to thank the one, the only, Louis Lawless for being here today. I nearly got kicked out of a theater. I, went, I can't remember what I saw about two weeks ago because I was booing and screaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, Gilbert Seinfeld. Hey, can I see you, Dick? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's about fucking time. Move on. Move on. All right, Louis. You have yourselves a good day. Uh, Gilbert, thanks for being here. Thank you for listening and support the show for the love of God. <laughs> uh, also, uh, George Takei, thank you for being here, friend. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. It yep. has been a fantastic... If unsightly tartar buildup yeah, is giving you... First time I rode you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I also want to do some shout outs. Uh, thank you, right? Helen Just Doyle. Kidding. Thank you for listening today. Sharon Chesley, of course, uh, the one, the only Phil DeYoung, uh, the intern, listener, uh, all the rest of you out there in listener land. Uh, thanks for listening today. I hope you have a great Thursday night. We'll catch you here tomorrow for the big uh, weekender. Yes, the Friday Frappuccino coming at you 5 p.m. Eastern. And don't forget tonight, if you're into astrology at all, I know I'm not, but if you are, don't forget to check out Starstruck tonight at 9. It's TLA Radio 1 where Kate will give you the the stars with with her cheetah print shoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, from all of us here at ACLA Studio 2, have yourselves a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, yeah, how do I how do I put this? Uh I I am out of here. I'm I'm going to Florida. All right, I quit. Kissy, it's all you. Uh, I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm moving around the news today, gang. Yes, I am. Oh yeah. And then I'm going to Florida. That's what I'm doing. I'm not even kidding. Phil DeYoung, thank you. You are the man. Well, hey, gang. Today on the big show, we got some very interesting developments as Ashley Madison's chief, Noel Biderman, resigns. Yes, he's out of there after hackers have exposed his clients' lists. That's right. Also, Donald Trump says, I'm the king of the tax code. Yeah, well, we already knew that. All right? Okay. Also today, the state of emergency in Florida as Tropical Storm Erica nears and the sister wives guest just ask a judge to strike down some bigamy laws so I can marry her and her sister. Uh, other stories we're following today include the former New Hampshire prep school student has indeed been acquitted of felony rape charges today. Urging civility, President Obama appeals to Jews on the Iran deal. That should be funny. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, Florida. Yeah. No, I'm going. I'm serious. I, well, I mean, I've always loved Florida anyway. I've been there many times. And, well, that cinches it. I'm getting a house there now. That's right. And, and yes, don't you worry. Rest assured, that will be the number one story in just a few minutes. Plus all that other goodiness. Got it all coming up for you on the Friday Frappuccino today. So hold on to your butts. Yeah, we're going to have a heck of a show here. Yes, we are. So, hey the hell am i doing get with the damn show crash what the hell are you doing buddy get your head out of that new law in florida it's time to get serious here at coffee and cigarettes that's right all that and so much more today so hey come on in and grab that cup have a seat light one up gang it's your coffee time
Well, don't worry, Phil. Don't worry. I, d- don't even worry. If the, if this story isn't actually true, uh, well, I'm going to move down to Florida and press legislators to make this happen. And, and it's got to be true because there's a picture. <laughs> there's a picture. So, you know, it's it's got to be true. Well, hey, gang, welcome to the show. Of course, to HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk, and your coffee and cigarettes Friday Frappuccino today for the 28th of August, 2015. 82 degrees right now in Central Park under sunny skies. Phil DeYoung, our man in Grand Rapids, Michigan, reports 75 and mostly cloudy. And Greg Howe, well, Greg Howe seems to be on a little bit of a Canadian world tour today. He's uh, in Nanaimo, currently where it is 66 degrees with 80% humidity and a 15% chance of rain. Of course, that's uh, when you convert that into the native Indian percentage, uh, that actually works out to about 98% chance of rain right there. So there you go. There you go. Welcome to the big show today, of course. Your coffee and cigarettes in the booth today, pushing those buttons for me, making the show go, is the one, the only Kissy Springer. Mm-hmm. And, of course, she's pushing the buttons on that pre 2442 digital broadcast mixer brought to us and you by the fine folks at presonus.com. If you're into anything audio-related, whether it's professional or you just like jacking around with pretty lights, get on over to presonus.com. Also, uh, this show is, as always, brought to you by the fine folks at Tim Hortons, New York City. That's right. Now with those eight fine locations in the city to serve all of your coffee and baked goods needs. That's right. Never, never will we find a video camera in the bathroom. Get on down there. Tim Hortons, always fresh. Also, I want to make a mention today, the Master of the Mountains, uh, yes, con- contest is actually on right now. And if you don't know Master of the Mountains because you're just a poser and you don't actually smoke cigarettes, well, Marlboro is having their, their annual Master of the Mountains contest right now. And if you get over to uh, Marlboro.com, uh, you can enter for your chance to win uh, two weeks, all expenses paid at the Marlboro Ranch and it's it's pretty cool. You can uh, you can get on your snowmobiles there and drive around the ranch. And uh, you know, at nighttime, you can go out hunting uh, Bigfoot and stuff. It's 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 really it's really something special. So uh, yeah, if you're a smoker or even if you're not, no purchase ne- just necessary. Of course, get on over to Marlboro dot com, and uh, well, you tell the Marlboro man that uh, Crash sent you. There you go. Oh boy, yes, yes, yes. So. Did that, did that, did that, all done, good, ready to go. Now, moving on, before we get to this uh, very, very important story topping the news this hour globally and superseding every other story we're doing today, of course, <clears throat> we do have to uh, introduce our three guests slash co-hosts today. And uh, our first one, of course, comes to us from, uh, well, actually not too far from Nanaimo, beautiful Mill Bay Film and Television Production Studios in Mill Bay, British Columbia, Canada. It's the one, the only, 35-time nominated, never uh, won Academy Award losing director, I guess we'll call him. The one, the only, Louis Lawless. Are you there today, sir? Are you you, you ready to go? You mean now? Yeah. Yeah, now. No, no, I don't know. I could company. Co- what? Give me a heads up, for Christ's sake. Com- <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to sit on the air for four hours. Some guy called me when I was from here about Manson. And uh, one of them to keep me in your face. He just kept fucking talking. And I said, I finally had to just hang up from him. In other words, if we can't say what we have to say in an hour, we better shut up. Well, you, you, you got that right, too, sir. But uh, you, you're on every weekday. So tell your company just to, to, to leave, okay? Just just get them out of there. <laughs> you know why, Chris? Because you're such a, a control freak. You don't want anyone to tell you what to do. Well, that's the way it's going to be. It's the way it's going to be. Uh, kick them the hell out. I don't care if it's uh, George Kennedy with his breath, breath assure commercials. You get them the hell out of there, and, and you're you're live right now. Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on, on the show? Yeah, well, you, absolutely. You go right ahead. I don't care what you do, but just get rid of your company because we're, we're, we're live. So. It's about fucking time. Move on. Move on. All right. <laughs> of course, we all know the Keckler. <laughs> 
Hey, it's coming to us live from about eight blocks down the block here from uh, Studio 2 in downtown Manhattan is the one, the only, Gilbert Gottfried. Are you ready today or do you have company too? Yeah. Do, 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 do you have people over? You're entertaining. You can't be bothered, really? <laughs> well. What the fuck? Well. <laughs> come on. I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Well, you say that now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll just go with the fact that you're ready and uh, do your intro then, smartass. And this is, I f- that up. All right. <laughs> uh, well, okay. So that's the two idiots. There, there we go. <laughs> uh, the idiots are out of the way now. Let's go to. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's go to, uh, well, all the heck way over to Malibu, California, and the uh, sprawling, spacious, homosexual ranch. <laughs> yes, yes uh, George Takei's house, which is kind of what I, from what I understand, I've never actually been there because the prick won't invite me. Yes. But, <laughs> well, I mean, let's be serious. Not that I would go anyway. No. But uh, yeah, I understand George's place is uh, well. It, it's it's quite the slut haven for the studs. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Gilbert, it, it is. He's he's got. Yes. Uh, you know, I mean, he's he professes his undying love for Brad. Yes. You know, and that that's his husband, and that's you know. But but the question yesterday, you know, how how often do you wake up with a cock in your ass? Yes. Right. <laughs> and uh, every every morning. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess uh, we should have actually, you know, been more specific and said whose because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He and Brad are kind of like Hef and, you know, whatever Hefner's wife of the week is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you'll see George off with these six uh, muscle boys and, you know, Brad will be off over here getting stuffed by a bunch of black guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, thank you, George, for joining the show today, and uh, please never, never invite me. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a treat to be here talking with you. Well, as long as we're just talking. Yes. <laughs> yes, no, no oil and no... no. <laughs> okay, now that I've creeped everybody out on the homosexual stuff... Let's uh, <laughs> let's let's get right down to the top story today. <laughs> That's right, top story today. It's coming out of the state of Florida. Oh yes, we got it coming out here. The state of Florida has passed a law. Yes, they have, which makes nudity legal. At all public beaches. Yeah. Yes, it is. Legal at all public beaches. Not even kidding. Uh, it's the story topping the hour right now because, of course, uh, accompanying this story is a uh, rather excellent photo of a beautiful blonde girl uh, and a beautiful brunette girl. Uh, both, well, about the same height and build, and damn, it's tasty, tasty stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And they, they, they don't have a stitch of clothing on, and they are frolicking in the beach uh, live right now. Just... <laughs> well, the state of Florida has made a bold change to its laws concerning nudity at public beaches, and this one might, well, ruffle some feathers. Beginning August 1st, full nudity is now legal at all public beaches, as long as you obtain a Florida state nudity License. There you go. <laughs> Governor Rick Scott approved the bill passed by the state legislature and has been at the beach with uh, binoculars ever since. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, making nudity the state owned beaches legal, yes, and he encourages tourists and residents alike to make use of the new law. Today is a great day. Not only will it be legal to hang out on the beach totally nude, but. We encourage you to do so, Governor Scott said. As long as you are a fairly attractive person, nobody is going to complain. 
Well, residents in several communities have said that they are really torn on the subject. On the one hand, everyone likes to free ball at once in a while, says Miami resident Jacob Miller, 58 years old. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, my wrinkly penis probably won't pass the inspection. (laughs) So I more than likely can get a license issued anyway. Thankfully, I live right on the beach, so even if I can't be nude, I certainly can enjoy all the fine young ladies who will be walking around muffs exposed. There you go. Oh, I, I don't think I ever thought in a million years I'd use the word muff on this show. Yes. Nah. <laughs> well, hell, you know, when we're talking about banging scrotums with George, you know, why not? <laughs> so there it is. And uh, kudos and credits, of course, going to our own uh, Phil DeYoung in Grand Rapids, Michigan, who is uh, at this moment packing to move to Florida. <laughs> Don't worry, Phil. I'll uh, I'll catch up with you. Yeah. yeah. I'll, uh, I'm just gonna finish the show here, and then I'm I'm outie. And if they want me to do it next week, it'll be remote. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Do the re- well. It'll be good. You know, maybe I can finally find my goddamn weather girl. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And, and and we're we're going here soon at HTLA. We got the the cameras and whatnot. Yes. We, we're going to go uh, to an HD live broadcast during all the shows. Yes. And uh, damn, I'll be able to show my naked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be able to show my my naked weather girl, and and you can't tell me that won't make us number one on the earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right there. Right there. So very exciting developments coming out of Florida today. And uh, yeah, yeah. Phil, I'll see you in a couple hours. Yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, moving on today. What else we got to do? Who really cares? The Florida story kicks ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. It's that Ashley Madison damn thing again. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Chief Noel Biderman resigns after the hackers have exposed his filthy cheaters. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Avid Life Media, owner of that cheating website, reiterated that it is coordinating with law enforcement officials in an effort to identify the anonymous hackers. However, the CEO of the cheating website, Ashley Madison's parent company, is out after hackers exposed the company's database, generating an adulterous worldwide fervor. Avid Life Media CEO Noel Biderman resigned in a mutual agreement with the company. The company announced that this morning. The existing senior management team will lead the company until a permanent CEO is appointed. And yes, I have put in my resume. <laughs> But you see, if I get hired, yes. uh, things are going to be a little bit different, you see. The, yes. Um, what I'm going to do there, of course, is, uh, of course, uh, I, I don't really care so much about the horny men. What I'm what I'm really concerned with yes. uh, is the quality of the product they receive. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be, uh, personally, if, if uh, hired CEO there, I'm going to uh, make sure that, uh, you know, I get a first date with all the prospective ladies. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know. It's kind of payback for Kate and her her English uh, background there, you know. Yes. Uh, I think I'll take some prima nocta of my own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the change is in the best interest of the company and allows us to continue to bro- provide disgusting services. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And support to our members and dedicated employees. We are steadfast in our commitment to our customer base. The company has said in a statement. Biderman's resignation comes after Ashley Madison, the website for married people whose motto is life is short, have an affair, was left reeling when its database was exposed by anonymous hackers. Hackers calling themselves the Impact Team posted stolen files to the Internet, disclosing personal information of as many as 37 million people. The Avid Life reiterated today that it's actively adjusting the attack on our business and members' privacy by the criminals. We're actively cooperating with international law enforcement in an effort to bring those responsible for the theft of property, member, and business information to justice, the company said. Well, good luck. (laughs) (laughs) 
It's never going to happen, for God's sake. They're hackers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're bouncing off of 50 proxies. You'll never catch them, you idiots. <laughs> Oh, they just don't understand. But we don't understand, really, because, you know, uh, some hackers, I guess, might be stupid. (laughs) You know? (laughs) I'm serious. You know, might not be like the movie hackers that got their shit together. (laughs) No, I don't. Because I asked him, I said, well, fly out here and I'll film you. What, your 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 company? Yes. Is, is that... Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> who, who's flying out where to film who, uh, Louie? What, what's, uh, what's the deal there? You love to do that kind of stuff. You always did. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know what to do with that. Yes. I don't... <laughs> Uh, George, give us a little rundown. Uh, tell us who you are. I'm George Takei, yeah. and uh, when I'm walking down the street, people shout out, Hey! Hey, Sulu! So I'm no more as Sulu mm-hmm. than as George Takei, right. which is what I really am. Right. But it's okay. We call you Sulu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? You don't know? I wasn't expecting that reaction. Well, what do you want us to call you? <laughs> <laughs> It's a simple question. Just, just give it to us. Do you think I'm uh, sexually aroused by Mr. Shatner? We, we, we didn't even mention him. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I did not sleep with him. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, all right, we'll go with that. Um, but we weren't asking if you, you slept with him. Uh we weren't even asking if you were banging him, but you do that generally when you're awake. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and maybe it's that uh, love hate. It could very well be. If I had a, he must be speaking in like gay symbolism now. Or something. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. We had a little trade. Dig, dig we? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah, no, not not with Gilbert's dick. No. <laughs> uh, you are yes. a douchebag. Uh, I know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am, and that's the way it's going to be. Well, hey, gang, listen, uh, we're going to go for that first commercial break, but don't you worry, because when we come back, we've got Donald Trump saying, I am the king of the tax code. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what that means, but I'm sure he'll explain this to us back in two. You've got it locked to HTLA Radio 1, New York. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions? Abundant with rich, fertile soil. What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches and always served fresh within 20 minutes just the way you like it? Now, what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons. Always fresh. Always great tasting coffee. Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer, and I never have to remember. Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful it sells itself in other people's commercials. You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power. Yeah, I do. Power! When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us... It was, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the, but the part worst part was, was the shower. shower. My, My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towels. Shower curtain. 
to find, find that, that whole vacation, vacation for her. For. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. White Rum has a new captain. Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. We're New York's best talk radio, ATLA Radio 1. He enjoys being the center of everything. Ah, who? And uh, when he's on the set, uh, he dominates. Oh, uh, huh? You may have heard about some of the um, difficulties that uh, uh, cast members had. Are you talking um, about Shatner again? We might again? be preparing a scene where you know, it'd be a close on you, and then it, sh- it would sh- uh, shift to Bill. And then you'd see Bill in a whispered conversation with the director, and the setup was changed, uh-huh. and it was on Bill, and you were the offstage voice. Yeah, well... So what? We, we're we're not talking about Shatner. We're not. <laughs> we're, we're not. I got lost. H T L A. Oh, H T L A. Have Have you gotten rid of your company yet? <laughs> is he uh, Is he gone there or what? And I finally figured out how to edit. Oh, okay. You You, you know, as a director, you don't have to edit, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it should be short and sweet. Oh, yeah? Is that how you edit? Just short and sweet? Yeah? <laughs> just, just get it done. And you know how to spell my last name on the check, right? It's Louis Lawless. Right. Absolutely, yeah. That's the famous story about Jerry Lee Lewis. You heard that story, haven't you? Uh, I know I did. Uh, Gilbert? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. He's becoming black. I like it. Do a little rap here, too. I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, gang, welcome back to the big show. Of course, your coffee and cigarettes for this Friday. Yes, the Friday Frappuccino on the 28th of August, 2015. 81 degrees still in Central Park. Sunny skies. 5.25 p.m. Now you know what time it is. Damn it, this show's educational. (laughs) (laughs) I go half an hour. Do I get 50,000? Not a chance. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You know, I'm the most talented guy in this room. Yes. And just to reconfirm, ladies and gentlemen, he's at home alone. Yes. <laughs> I lived in I lived in Greenwich Village for a while when I first started out as an actor. Yeah, we know that. Uh, some of the, uh, the, 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 the mothers are still trying to nail you for child support. <laughs> 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 it's, about, it's about fucking time. Move on. Uh-huh. Move on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, welcome back to the show, gang. And moving on today, of course, uh, well, I can't even get to the damn story yet because we have to do this other stupid shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, guesses, Gilbert, on where the hell the weather might be coming from today? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, before we get to our uh, meteorologist extraordinaire that doesn't seem to know his ass from a hole in the ground, literally. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we do have to get to our uh, traffic for uh, L.A., of course. Uh, Yes, we are the only radio station in New York that covers L.A. traffic. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, it's, you know, it's that little giving back thing you know yes. it's like you know george comes on our show at a drop of a hat yes <laughs> yeah probably literally yeah. <laughs> you know he comes on our show and, yes. and and you know so i guess you know it's the least we can do to to give him a little traffic update you know <laughs> I, I guess that's how it works anyway and yeah, without further ado, let's get to a Brock Favors up in HTLA Chopper 1, uh, flying somewhere around L.A. Brock, give her. Hello, everybody out there. This is Brock Favors with Traffic on the Ones, Chad Armstrong. 
is out sick today. So I am filling in for my usual land reports, and uh, I'm up here in the chopper, but I gotta tell you guys, I am loving the view. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Woo. All right. <laughs> well, we are um uh we are over the tent and it's massively clogged down there like a pint of maple syrup on a cool November morning. And we do Oh shit. Oh, oh, Okay. Okay, I am uh, I am very sorry folks. <laughs> it's a little bit of a bumpy ride up here. We are now approaching the 405 and uh, where the left lane is blocked by a mattress. So somebody is uh, gonna be doing a little return to IKEA later today. You know what I'm saying? Oh no please! Oh goddamn! Oh, damn, I'm I'm very sorry, brother, but I'm losing my shit up here. Actually, you have every right to. We're about to crash. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I don't know if it's my uh, headphones, Gilbert. Yes. Uh, but that one sounded like it really freaking hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's all this new equipment in here, the, the surround sound. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, uh, Brock's are hurting. And, of course, uh, as always, uh, HTLA Radio 1 and its family of freaking companies, uh, including possibly soon Ashley Madison. Um, <laughs> and we, of course, extend our condolences to the Favors family. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There we go, and uh, well, I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to dick around. I just want to get through this next idiot's uh, contribution, uh, I guess. <laughs> uh, but before I do, uh, pop quiz, Gilbert Seinfeld. Hey, can I see a dick? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Now I got to do it. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I don't know. It's, it seems to me the last several Fridays, it's it's pretty much always been Guam. Yes. Uh, I'm thinking maybe, do you, do you think it is again today? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We really got to get rid, rid of this guy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to actually make a website. Yes. I, I am. I'm, it's a, get rid of Frankie.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm. I'm. Done. I would. I would sooner spend the weekend with with George W. Bush. Than, yes. Uh, you know. <laughs> and I hate George W. Bush. So. <laughs> well, actually, that's not fair. I can't say I hate George W. Bush. He was just kind of a, 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 a an ignorant tool. Yes. He just, <laughs> in Cheney's evil plan. Yes. Just the innocuous doofy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, without further ado, let's get to it. Uh, let's go to HTLA meteorologist, the one, the only Frankie McDonald, until next week when I get a couple of big-titted naked girls to do our weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? The beauty about it is yes. the HTLA can't say no because that'll be like 70, 100 million thousand hits. It, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, Frankie McDonald, HTLA meteorologist, with your weather from possibly three years ago. Frankie. This is Frankie McDonald, my own TV station live in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Typhoon Chan Harm is now headed towards Guam on Saturday, <laughs> July 4th, 2015. It's going to bring up to 30 plus millimeters rain. It's going to be wind driven rain. It's going to be sideways rain in Guam. Nailed it. 
It's going to bring big, huge waves crash along the beaches and shores of Guam as well. It's going to bring down power lines and snapping telephone poles in half and snapping tree branches in half. It's going to be powerful winds gusts up to well over 100 kilometers per hour, which is a Category 1 typhoon. It's going to bring powerful winds with wind driven rain and in, in Guam. And the typhoon Chen Hom is currently moving westward direction. Then it's going to turn west northwest direction and aim towards Guam on Saturday, July 4th, 2015. It's going to bring a lot of rain it's, and very strong winds. It's capable of knocking out power in snapper tree branches and half and bringing down power lines and snapping telephone poles in half in Guam. Stuff. Yeah. People in Guam, being prepared. Heavy rubber boots ready for ankle ready for ankle ready. During a typhoon, Chen Hom. Yeah. Stay indoors okay. and don't go outside. <laughs> Make sure if your yeah. rain ready, rubber boots ready, your rain boots ready. Wear your rain gear, wear your rubber boots, wear your ankles to keep you dry. When the typhoon gets real bad, stay indoors and don't go outside. Stay away from the beaches and don't go near the shores. Because the typhoon chain hop is going to be real bad in Guam on Saturday, July 4th, 2015. It's going to bring powerful winds. Big waves crash along the shores. Make sure you have your flashlights ready, candles ready, crank up radio ready, generators ready, and extra batteries ready, and bottled water ready as well. Order your pizzas and order your Chinese food. Yes. Buy cases of Pepsi, <laughs> buy cases of Coke. Have your iPad <laughs> charge. Have your iPhone charge. Have your Samsung Galaxy smartphone charge. Have your Samsung Galaxy tablet charge. Have your laptop charge. Have your tablet charge. Have your 3G and 4G ready. All right. Because Typhoon Chain Hub is going to be very powerful yep. in Guam. Mm-hmm. On Saturday, July 4th, 2015. You bet. If everybody lives in Guam, yeah. be prepared for Typhoon. Chan Hom. Chan yeah. Hom on Saturday, July 4th, 2015. <laughs> Best luck to you, people in Guam. Be prepared for Typhoon. Chan Hom on Saturday. Uh-huh. Take care. Stay safe. Don't get caught in a Typhoon. Hmm. Stay dry. Be safe. What's the uh, What's the official word on the puddles, Frankie? What's the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's the uh, What's the word there? Why'd you cut him off? <laughs> that that that's gold, Kissy. What are you What are you doing? <laughs> I'll just sit there, get him back. Yes, get him. Back. <laughs> God damn it, Frankie! Can you hear me? <laughs> oh well, we can only hope that he too has been gunned down by a. <laughs> Well, thank God that's over. Yes. <laughs> that's... <laughs> it's uh, now time to get to uh, Donald Trump. Yes, I am the king of the tax code, he says. Billionaire Donald Trump went after the hedge fund manager's tax preparation at companies and Hillary Clinton today, pledging that he would come out with a plan to simplify the tax code and make Wall Street pay more. Look, nobody knows the tax code better than I do, okay? I know it better. I am the king of the tax code, he boasted. The Republican presidential candidate said he would release a tax policy proposal in the next four weeks that could cut taxes for the middle class and make Wall Street pay more. The hedge fund guys won't be happy, but it's pretty much everyone else is going to love it. He says, isn't this great, this, this businessman? He, yes. he comes in, he's like, oh, okay, I'm going to slaughter you stock market idiots. Yeah. <laughs> I make my money in real estate. Yes. <laughs> I make my money in real estate. Yeah. Yes, the Republican presidential candidate. Yes, the hedge fund guys will not be happy, but everyone else will. I know the hedge fund guys, you know, very well. I probably know all of them one way or another. And big supporters of Hillary Clinton and Jeb Bush, he said. I mean, they're all supporting her. It's a joke. It's a joke that she can get away with it. Trump suggested that he would eliminate the sometimes called a carried interest loophole, which allows some fund managers to pay taxes on the capital gains rate of 20 percent, about half of what they would pay if their earnings were taxed as ordinary income. The concept of hedge funds, now these are guys, they don't really build anything, they shuffle paper. They go back and forth, they live beautifully, and so do I. 
I mean, I could tell you, I have friends that laugh about how little they pay, and it's not fair to the middle class, he says. Trump says his plan would put tra- tax preparation firms completely out of business. People that make $50,000 a year have to go to H&R Block or somebody else to get their tax returns done because it's so complicated. And they're smart people, he said. They shouldn't have to pay these idiots to file their taxes. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Yeah. One more day and one more Trump initiative I love. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, uh, Phil DeYoung and I could be running into some vicious headwinds trying to get to Florida for the naked girls. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not good there. State of emergency in Florida has been declared as Tropical Storm Erica is nearing. Tropical Storm Erica lashed Puerto Rico today with heavy rains and wind after killing at least four people and causing devastating floods and landslides. Thank you for covering that, Frankie McDonald. (laughs) (laughs) Also on the eastern island of the Caribbean island of Dominica, where several people remain missing. Florida Governor Rick Scott declared a state of emergency, uh, but said that he would be at uh, Cabela's picking up his binoculars for the beach. (laughs) Declared a state of emergency ahead of the approaching storm, which could impact uh, the state by Sunday or Monday. President Obama was briefed on disaster preparations, the White House said, but they left out the naked girls. (laughs) (laughs) And FEMA rears its ugly head. Yes, the Federal Emergency Management Agency has already deployed assistance teams to Puerto Rico, St. Croix, and St. Thomas, and they continue to support response activities to ensure that there are no unmet needs on those islands. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest says that the agency has also positioned relief supplies in Georgia. Erica will likely remain a tropical storm strength as it nears Florida, according to the National Hurricane Center. The center said Erica is expected to weaken and could even dissipate in the next 12 to 24 hours. If the center of Erica survives the mountainous terrain of Hispaniola, Uh, The island that is home of the Dominican Republic in Haiti, it should slowly reorganize back into a tropical storm by this weekend, just northeast of Cuba. Uh, If Erica does not survive the interaction with uh, Hispaniola, it, well, may never reorganize into a coherent tropical storm again, and impact on Florida will be reduced, they said. The portion of South Florida is in severe or extreme drought right now, according to the most recent U.S. drought monitor, and some rank would be welcome there. However, it may not be the case elsewhere in Florida. For example, the Tampa area is already soaked from about of historic rain in late July and early August, the Tampa Bay Times reports. And a significant strike from Erica would almost certainly cause flooding. New tropical storm warnings have been issued for parts of the Bahamas as Erica approaches. As of 2 p.m. Eastern, the storm had maximum sustained winds of 50 miles an hour. Big deal. Come on. (laughs) All this crap for 50 mile an hour? Yes. Come on. (laughs) It it, it wouldn't even be breaking the law on the the, the highway. What what the... Yes, it was centered about 60 miles southwest of Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, and was moving at 18 miles an hour. The tiny Caribbean island of Dominica, uh, Ian Pinard, Minister of Works and Ports, told CNN that 25 people were killed in the community alone because of flooding and landslides. He says 14 bodies have already been recovered. The report could not be immediately confirmed. There are still persons missing, he told the Trinidad and Tobago TV station. The country's infrastructure has been devastated. Photos and videos on social media show floodwaters inundating streets and causing buildings to collapse in Dominica. Up to 15 inches of rain fell there between late Wednesday and early Thursday, the Antigua Weather Service says. In the Pacific, two hurricanes, Ignacio and Yemena, continue to spin in the open waters. Ignacio could impact Hawaii by Monday or Tuesday, devastating Barack Obama's fake movie house. <laughs> <laughs> It's now over 800 miles away from Hilo, Hawaii, according to the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. So everybody shut the hell up about Erica. She blows at 50. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't know. You know, uh, I guess maybe that's why Frankie didn't have the uh, the Tropical Storm Erica story on today, of course. Yes. uh, Well... She she doesn't really you know fifty miles what is that my my kid can ride his scooter faster than that. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, sister's wives guest asked judge to strike down bigamy laws. Yes, I thought this was going to be out of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I'm surprised to find out it's out of Montana. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's right. In Helena, Montana, a Montana man is asking a federal judge to strike down the state's bigamy laws so he can marry a second wife, his wife's sister. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not, George? You know, if you can marry another guy and slap frickin' scrotums, I can have two sister wives. Thank you. <laughs> Imagine that. Kate's sister is hot, too. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> well, Nathan Collier, his legal wife, Victoria, and his common-law wife, Christine, filed a lawsuit on Thursday in U.S. District Court in Billings, Montana. They cite the U.S. Supreme Court's uh, June ruling allowing gay marriage. <laughs> You see what you've done, George? Now everybody is fucking everybody. <laughs> and, you know, too bad for my brother-in-law, but, yes. you know. <laughs> I'm going to hit that wife of his. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, the June ruling allowing gay marriage in reference to biblical figures with multiple wives and their argument as in, in that state is unconstitutionally preventing them from legitimizing their polyamorous relationship. Nathan Collier, 46, says he's fighting for marriage equality for polygamy. I'm fighting for my family's right to exist as a family, he said. I can't imagine a greater cause to fight for. He said he is the former Mormon who was excommunicated for polygamy and now has no religious affiliation whatsoever. He and his family made their relationship public by appearing on the reality TV show Sister Wives back in January. Yeah. <laughs> well, Nathan and Victoria Collier married in 2000. He and his second wife, Christine, had a religious wedding ceremony in 2007 but did not sign a marriage license to avoid bigamy charges, he said. Combined, the trio have eight children from their present and past relationships. My second wife, Christine, who I'm not legally married to, says she's put up with my crap for a lot of the years. She deserves legitimacy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Montana, like all 50 states currently, outlaws bigamy, holding multiple marriage licenses. But Supreme Court's Chief Justice John Roberts said in his dissent of the same-sex marriage ruling that people in polygamous relationships could make the exact same legal argument that not having the opportunity to marry disrespects and sub subordinates them it's just like i said yes i, I said this when when they they did did that 5-4 ruling on gay marriage i said it i said it <laughs> oh yeah no, no no that guy in walmart that was effing his pig yes <laughs> yeah yeah he's gonna marry that pig you watch <laughs> So, so how does it feel, George? Tell me. How does it feel to uh, know that you've made it legally proper for men to have 16 wives and, uh, well, marry pigs? How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you, Maybe it's that uh, love-hate. You're okay with that, really? <laughs> <laughs> What am I supposed to Okay. <laughs> All right. Whatever you say, buddy. The music is fantastic. I oh, am? Yeah? Oh, you got to hear it. Uh, the, the I'm marrying my pig theme? <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Well, after the Supreme Court's ruling in June, Yellowstone County officials denied Nathan and Christine Collier's request for a license. State laws that forbid a man from marrying more than one woman denies them from constitutionally agreed rights to equal protection, due process, free speech, freedom of religion, freedom of association, and condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Collier said he wants a judge to prevent the state from enforcing those laws against consenting men and women in plural relationships. I love the sound of that. Yeah. <laughs> and especially, you know, in light of, you know, the, the new prospects, Phil and I going down to Florida for, you know, the nude beaches. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, the lawsuit was filed in U.S. District Court in Billings, Montana. It names Montana Attorney General Tim Fox, Governor Steve Bullock, Yellowstone County Attorney Scott Twitto, and Yellowstone County District Court Clerk Christy Lee Bolter as defendants. All the defendants declined to comment on the suit. Oh, really? 
why would you decline to comment? This is going to be, you know, uh, national news again for the next several weeks. Uh, we've all got the right to marry whatever the hell we want. <laughs> <laughs> And actually, you know, in the studio here, you know, I've I've got uh, yes. well, I've, I've got a bunch of different uh, sets of headphones and, and mic cables. Maybe I'll marry a mic cable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I I grant you it'll be kind of a rough relationship. Yes. You know. <laughs> But, I mean, it's not that different from how it is now. I mean, I use them to tie off my balls when I'm masturbating, so. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, you gotta love it. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's balls out on today's show. Yes. Yes, it is. (laughs) Yeah. Shut up, George. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yes, thank you. Where was I? Oh, yes, tying my balls off, masturbating. Right. Uh, well, we do have lots more to cover today, of course, on the Big Friday show. So, uh, do I? What the hell? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Am I? No. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yes, it is time at that time again uh, to go for our second commercial break. Uh, don't worry, though, gang. When we come back, we've got the, the former New Hampshire prep school student we were telling you about last week about that whole rape thing. Yes. Well, you got acquitted today because it turns out that the girl did consent. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to that. And, and uh, man, uh, we got Obama news coming up. Yes. we we got all kinds of stuff. Uh, don't touch that dial. We'll be back in two. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Good morning. Welcome to Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where fresh always tastes better. What can I make you this morning? How about our new flatbread breakfast paninis? Made fresh, just for you, with your favorite breakfast ingredients on maple or multigrain flatbread. Then grilled to hot, melted perfection. Just $2.99. Who couldn't warm up to that? Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where quality really does meet value. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us... It was, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the, but best the worst part was, was the shower. shower. My, My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towel shower curtain to find that whole vacation, vacation for, her. for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Let's do a brand new day. Let's step away from the bland and let the color fly. Let's get to the one store with more number one choices and match this or this without using too much of this. Then, let's crack open a can and get to it. Paint? No. Let's do POW. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Glidden Duo starts at a new lower price of $25.46 a gallon. White Rum has a new captain. Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. You've got it locked to HLA Radio 1, New York. You mean now? Now. No, no, I don't know. I could company. Give me a heads up, for Christ's sake. (laughs) Yeah, but I don't want to sit on the air for four hours. Some guy called me when I was from here about Manson. And the one that keep me in your face, just kept fucking talking. And I said, I finally had to just hang up. In yeah. other words, if we can't say what we have to say in an hour, we better I shut up. I think it's up. a treat to be here talking with you. Well, I'm glad, George. Uh, great. And uh, Louie kicked him the hell out. And uh... <laughs> He called me and he called me and he called me. And he? he kept calling me and I wouldn't answer the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that'll happen, you know. That's the famous story about Jerry Lee Lewis. You heard that story, haven't you? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 
you know why, Chris? Because you're such a, a control freak. You don't want anyone to tell you what to do. Mm, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna agree with you there, because everybody tells me what to do. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Can you give me any help for twenty five thousand dollars? I don't know. I'm gonna have to wait till somebody lets me know if that's okay or not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's right. Welcome back to the Friday Show, gang. Coffee and cigarettes, Friday Frappuccino on HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk. Of course, 81 degrees, still Central Park. And, uh, yeah, I got some I got some uh, updates. I believe 74 now, Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's what's going on there. Still cloudy, but, uh, well, you know, 74 is better than uh, kicking the ball. Yes. <laughs> I also want to do some uh, shout-outs and uh, Hades and how-tos. Uh, of course, the one, the only, Helen Doyle. Yeah, she's coming to us uh, live from wherever she is live. Yes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, in the house today, apparently. And, uh, well, uh, to be honest, just friended me on Facebook. And there you go. That's... <laughs> Well, I mean, no, that, that's not all I've got. Yes. No, I've got I got hundreds. I could go on for days about crap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, they once asked Sammy, they once said to Sammy Davis Jr. that he's the greatest performer in the world. Right. And Sammy said that he didn't agree with that. Yeah. He thinks Mickey Rooney was the greatest performer in the world. And you see, I don't think either one of those cor- is correct. I-, I think Louis Lawless is, is the best. <laughs> My film, Un- Unrepented, did very well in Europe. See, it did. And and it, d- he delivered that line, and, and it, it's almost like he's convinced it really did well over there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And as you know, well, uh, maybe you don't, Gilbert. You've never directed anything. Yes. But, uh, um. You know, when I'm working with actors and whatnot, yes. uh, you know, I, I can always tell if I'm I'm really getting a, a truthful, uh, honest uh, performance in a scene. Yes. And, uh, you know, the, the, it's funny because, you know, Louis taught me everything I know. And the one thing that I know is when somebody is, is really being truthful. And, yeah, Louis is about the most truthful person I know. <laughs> 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 No, it's it's absolutely true, and I mean, you know, if if certainly if he had any problem with with um, you know George banging Brad up the ass or vice versa, you know, <laughs> you know he'd be sure to tell us because uh, he's Irish and not PC. Yes. Now, so, <laughs> and I don't have a problem with it either. You know, yes. just don't bloody show it to me. You know. I, <laughs> Anyway, shout-outs and hey-twos to uh, the one, the only Helen Doyle there, uh, checking out the show from uh, Renegade Radio Friends. It's a uh, some sort of radio group on uh, Facebook. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I, I guess there's other radio friends there that, uh, well, they, they won't add me as a friend because they haven't responded to my friend requests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's about about fucking time. Move on. Move on. I'm not moving on. I've got other things to talk about. Shut up. No. Uh, Of course, uh, the one, the only, Phil DeYoung, of course, from Grand Rapids, Michigan, in the house today. Yes. And uh, the one, the only, Sharon Hundley Chesley, did finally grace us with her presence, but oddly enough, only after the Texas, Montana story. (laughs) Yeah. And and although technically the story didn't come out of Texas, yes, uh, I'm I'm really sticking with yeah, that's a Texas story. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it, it just is. Come on, it's about fucking time. Move on. Move on. Yeah. Okay, Louis. We're what? What do you want? We're we're live on the air. We're doing it. What do you? <laughs> <laughs> you love to do that kind of stuff. You always did. Yeah. So shut up and let me do it. Yeah. <laughs> Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. I think the time has come to mute him. <laughs> yes, well, I think it's a treat to be here talking with you. Uh, uh, good for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I suppose I should be happy you haven't tried to talk about your internment again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, moving on today, uh, gang, we do have that story about the uh, New Hampshire prep school student that has been acquitted of felony rape today. Of course, last week wasn't looking so good for the boy. In that first story where they were condemning him to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now it seems he's a little angel and innocent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That former student at the New Hampshire Prep School was acquitted of felony rape charges today, but found guilty of lesser sexual assault charges like touching her pee-pee. <laughs> <laughs> A 12-person jury found Owen Labrie, 19, a former student at St. Paul's School, guilty in the fel- felony of using a computer to lure a minor. I do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Wow, well, I, d- I didn't know it was illegal. Yes. <laughs> also endangering the welfare of a child, a misdemeanor. Labrie was also found guilty of three counts of misdemeanor sexual assault. A 15-year-old freshman girl accused Labrie, who was 18 at the time, of raping her. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, raping her in a building on campus is part of a tradition called the, quote, senior salute, in which senior boys try to have sexual encounters with underclassmen before graduation. The trial put a harsh spotlight on the distinguished New Hampshire prep school and its culture of sexual relations. In a tearful testimony, the girl, now 16, said Labrae of Tunbridge, Vermont, forced himself upon her and repeatedly ignored her when she said she did not want to have sex. Labrae, only uh, the only witness in the defense called to testify, said that the two had consensual sex. Epic fail. <laughs> <laughs> Prosecutors had several of LeBray's f- friends and family testify. He told them that the two had sex after the encounter. LeBray testified he lied to his friends about the encounter. LeBray was in tears as the guilty verdict was read. He could face as much as seven years in jail for the felony charge, up to a year in jail for each misdemeanor. He will have to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. Well, that's not effed up, is it? No. <laughs> Bullshitters, never keep your mouth shut, always hustling, Mm -hmm. always looking for something to do and and putting things together. That's a sex offender. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, after the verdict was announced, a statement was released on behalf of the 16-year-old's family that said LeBray was held accountable, quote, in some way for his actions. The statement said, however, there was no joy in the verdicts because of what the girl has lost. Her Virginia (laughs) Tall. Well, LeBray's sentencing hearing is scheduled for October 29th. St. Paul's School sent a letter to the school community Friday com- condemning, or no, commend. I don't know, condemning, commending, it's all the same. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Commending the victim and her family for their perseverance throughout the trial. The letter also said that the school has taken steps to improve its policies and programming to prevent bullying, harassment, and gender-based violence. Gender-based violence. Yes. So is that where you, like, whip your penis out and hit somebody with it? And then... <laughs> <laughs> or is that just kicking the nuts? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, gender-based What the hell's wrong with this country? God. How many times as a kid did I get kicked in the nuts? Come on. <laughs> Yes, improve its policies and programming to prevent bullying, harassment, and gender-based violence. The school also said it continues to address students' participation in the, quote, game of sexual conquest, such as the senior salute originally created by the school. (laughs) There you go. And moving on today, of course, we did promise you Obama news, and damn it. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, We got it. We got Obama news. <laughs> That's right. You love it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, today, urging civility, Obama appeals to Jews on Iran deal. Yes, in Washington today, President Obama called for more civil debate over the Iran nuclear deal, telling American Jewish leaders that he shares their concerns about Iran's threat to Israel, but ensuring a nuclear-free Iran was the most important objective at all costs. Give them everything. Give them, give them. (laughs) He says, I'm appreciative of the uh, anxieties and concerns that people have. I respect them, Obama said. 
I'm somebody who wouldn't be sitting here without the support of friends and supporters in the Jewish community and all the people I've lied to all across this country. <laughs> <laughs> He went on to say, some of whom are still opposed to this deal and me. <laughs> but he says, they're still my friends and we'll still be playing golf and they'll be over there starving. <laughs> wow, that's a hell of a quote. Yes. <laughs> While casting the debate in an honest disagreement among friends, Obama told members of the Jewish community that the commitment to Israel is sacrosanct and nonpartisan, and it always has been and always will be. Obama's comments came in a live webcast with Jewish American Leaders Friday, watched live by more than 5,000 YouTube users. Apparently, we were able to find one venue that we not already used to lobby for the Iran deal, the White House Press Secretary Josh Ernest said. The international deal does not need congressional approval, but Congress can reject it if opponents can marshal two-thirds of each chamber to override a presidential veto. Jewish Democrats have been key in that battle, but they are split. Senator Chuck Schumer and Elliot Engel and Stephen Israel of New York are among those opposed. Senator Dianne Feinstein of California and Sandy Levin of Michigan, as well as Jared Nadler of New York, are in favor. Internationally, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has emerged as the most vocal opponent of the deal, and Obama acknowledged that others have opposed it less publicly. I know sometimes that makes it difficult for members of the Jewish community because the preference is for no daylight, and that means no arguments, Obama said. He said it's better to uh, better to air these things out, even if it's uncomfortable, as long as we keep it civil and remain focused on the big picture. Yes, 2016, when you're not president anymore. <laughs> Well, in addition to giving a point-by-point -point defense of the deal, Obama made a personal appeal to American Jews, asking them to overcome the emotions of the issues and look at the facts. If my grandparents traveled to Israel and lost family in the Holocaust and heard someone denying it, I'd have a visceral reaction of, how can I do business with someone like that? I understand, he says, it's loathsome. As an African-American and former slave... <laughs> <laughs> I, of course, understand that history teaches us that man can be very cruel to man, especially white man. <laughs> and that you have to take threats seriously. But what history also teaches us is that sometimes the best security is to enter into negotiations with your enemies, Obama said, comparing the talks to the nuclear talks with the Soviet Union by Presidents Kennedy, Nixon, and Reagan all of whom fell asleep. <laughs> well, Obama received a tough but respectful questioning from the moderators of the webcast, who likewise urged a civil debate on the issue. Quote, Our people, as you know, Mr. President, over the years, have been uh, there have been a lot of tyrants who have threatened us, and we will have to take them seriously, too. I know you appreciate that, says Stephen Greenberg, president of the Conference of Presidents of Mayor, Major American Jewish organizations. So there you go. He's 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 on the on the road to I don't know Wellville. Uh, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the hell he's talking about, and yes. uh, we really need him to get the hell out of there. Yes, we, we're gonna. <laughs> we got to get him gone. It it you know it, it's like you know what it's like. Yes, I, I know what it's like. I don't think Obama can read. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm serious. I don't think the man can read. I I think he's he just looked at this thing and you know played that that illiterate cowboy from Unforgiven. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you. Yeah, I'm gonna bet you money he cannot read. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I didn't want to get to this story because, well, it sucks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go back to the Florida naked story again? <laughs> yeah. Yes, minute by minute, the WDBJ's TV's Day of Sorrow. Yes, let's go through it minute by minute now. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it almost makes me want to go and complete that man's work. You know? 
<laughs> you know, it's it's bad enough that he kills two people on air. I want to go down there at the five o'clock report and just kill everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Shut up. Yes. Shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. Oh, I felt like this. And shut up. <laughs> Grow the hell up. Be glad it wasn't you and move the frick along. Yeah. <laughs> About, about fucking time. Move on. See? Move on. Yeah. There you go. That's all you got to do. Move, <laughs> move on. They're dead. It's done. You know, uh, I believe the quote all over Twitter is uh, hashtag heartless. Yeah. <laughs> well, to all the mourners, I would say it's time for you to uh, get that stiff upper lip and be a little heartless yourself. All right. <laughs> Well, in Roanoke, Virginia, Chris Hurst came home after anchoring the 11 o'clock news at WDBJ-TV and forced himself to sweat, stay awake with his girlfriend. Wow, she must suck. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't even> yes. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, and Allison Parker woke up early Wednesday for her morning shift at the same television station. He wanted to make her breakfast and steal a few moments of time together with her sweet ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, on this Wednesday morning, he said in interviews, Thursday, long before the sun rose, he cooked a cheesy scrambled eggs, blended a smoothie with mangoes, peaches, and banana, and laid out a bagel. You know what I call that? Yes. I call that excellent storytelling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, you didn't. You didn't, buddy. Don't even think. You were passed out. That's... <laughs> no, no. She was the workaholic and was up before the crack of dawn and off to work. You were sleeping until noon. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to honor her memory in the least little bit, get a job. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Parker woke at 1 a.m. and left for work. As usual, two hours later on her way in, she texted him, Good night, sweet boy. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Hurst said he went to sleep. He woke a few hours later to frantic phone calls, urging him to come to the station. Come to the station. We're frantic. We're frantic. <laughs> <laughs> well, while Hurst had slept, Parker, a cameraman Adam Ward, and the local executive that they were interviewing would be gunned down on live TV by an angry former colleague they knew as Bryce Williams. Parker and Ward died. The executive, Vicki Gardner, would be gravely injured. The morning began for Parker as many mornings begin at a local TV station. Soft interview with local muckety-muck. Well before the morning news started at 5 a.m., Parker and cameraman Adam Ward set up at the Smith Mountain Lake for an interview with Chamber of Commerce Executive Director Vicki Gardner. At 5.10 a.m., Parker promoted her upcoming piece on live TV, noting that she where she was and that she would do an interview Morning anchor Kimberly McBroom recounted Parker and Ward made their first full report at 5.40 a.m., she said. Vester Flanagan, the former WDBGA... Uh, I don't... Uh, it's just the BJ thing. <laughs> WDBJ. Yes. There we go. Yes, reporter who appeared on air as Bryce Williams lived across uh, Hirschberger Road from the station. He had plenty of time to figure out uh, from a 5.10 a.m. promo where Parker and Ward would be during the two-hour newscast and the 40-minute drive, McBroom said. In his car, police said he had dozens of rounds of ammunition and a briefcase packed with three license plates, a wig, a shawl, an umbrella, and sunglasses. Ah, oh, he's doing the old uh, cognito thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they'll never recognize me with this wig and sunglasses. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, a few seconds into Parker's 6.45 a.m. on-air interview, Flanagan, wearing a video camera that recorded the scene, walked up to the TV crew as Gardner spoke. He pointed a 9mm Glock semi-automatic handgun at Parker without anybody noticing. He then lowered the gun, slid behind Ward, and opened fire. Ten shots pierced the morning air. In the newsroom, McBroom heard the shots and a woman's screams. The live broadcast captured Parker's gaped mouth expression in utter confusion. I don't know what actually happened, McBroom said. Really? You just saw it on TV? <laughs> 
Yes, she said Thursday after anchoring the morning show, perhaps fireworks or nearby shots, she thought. Anything except this news. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the longer it went without hearing from them, the more I knew something was seriously wrong, she said. And the control, you you just saw her gun down, really? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, that could have been special effects. We'll we'll wait till they call. Yes. Yeah. Well, in the control room, Melissa Odd, a morning news producer and Ward's fiance, was working her last day before starting a new job in North Carolina. As the scene played out before her, she heard the shots. She collapsed. She was taken to hospital. Her best friend, WDBJ crime reporter Nadine Messer, uh, spent most of the day trying to comfort Ott after she was released and went to a friend's house. WDBJ cameraman Sam Doyle, a 25-year veteran of the station, watched the segment at home while getting ready to go to work. He replayed it frame by frame and threw in some special effects. <laughs> <laughs> Ward's camera had captured an image of the shooter as Ward crumpled to the ground, but Doyle at first couldn't identify him. At the station, he looked again. This time, he recognized the man he knew as Bryce Williams. There was no doubt in my mind, Doyle said. Hearst called Franklin County Sheriff Bill Overton as he rushed into the station. He said, we know there are bodies down. I said, please tell me there are no fatalities, Hearst said. The sheriff just laughed. (laughs) At 8.40 a.m., WDBJ general manager Jeff Marks announced that on air that Parker and Ward had died. Most of the newsroom learned of the deaths at the same time. People were crying. People were trying to console Melissa and Chris, trying to console themselves. Marks said all 115 employees were in the building and everybody was crying. (laughs) Now, they also had a lot of questions about what happened, and he said, we're starting to act like a newsroom now. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Good on you, professional. Uh, (laughs) Carice Stewart, a young general assignment reporter in his third week on the job, had come into the station on his day off. He spent the day answering phones and trying to console co-workers who knew the victims better and were grieving more than he was. A few hours later, and miles away on Interstate 66, Virginia State Trooper Pamela Neff entered data for Flanagan's rented Chevrolet Sonic into her license plate reader at 11.20 a.m. The computer spit out a notice that the car had been passed by not three minutes earlier, according to Richmond Time Dispatch. And she drove through the traffic and spotted the car at 11.24. With more police cars in pursuit, Flanagan's car veered off the highway onto the median. Flanagan shot himself with the same handgun he used to shoot the journalist. Law enforcement officials said he died at Inova Fairfax Hospital in Falls Church. The station broadcast its newscast as usual at 5 p.m., dominating the night by tributes to the dead journalists. McBroom, on the verge of tears, returned to the anchor chair Thursday morning at 5 with guest co-anchor Steve Grant from sister station KYTV-TV in Springfield, Missouri. The Missouri station flew in staffers to fill the WDJB holes. (laughs) (laughs) It was like nothing I ever covered before, McBroom said. We've been through a lot of national nightmares, but this was our family. This was us. Mm, yeah, well, it was still news. Keep working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks, Kissy. I, I don't know why we had that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> minute by minute morons. There, there you go. <laughs> uh, it's just life, and I love doing it. I love doing these kind of stories anyway. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. The, these, you know, the... <laughs> These are the kind of stories that that just fill you up with goodness, right? <laughs> like, uh, it's like like Brad filling up you, you with his love. That, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of Brad, we do have to get to that mailbag question. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. That's right, and it's not uh, M A I L. It's M A L E. Yes. <laughs> The mailbag there, and of course, uh, today's question, uh, hang on a sec, who is it coming from here? Hang. Oh, are we going to do this again? Really, Kissy? Seriously? You know, maybe send it to me? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right. 
Well, let's hum it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, we could we could even write lyrics. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Waiting for the stupid email, you stupid bitch. <laughs> Come on, give it to me now. You know you want a ditch. Every day it's the same shit. Yes. <laughs> we can't get the email. <laughs> I don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> so I'm singing like a big fool. <laughs> I wonder if we could pipe in like the elevator music. Yeah. Yeah. The music is fantastic. No. Oh, yeah. oh, you gotta hear it. Yeah, okay. We're there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're gonna get fired. Kissy Springer is out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Screw this. I'm lighting a smoke. Yeah. <laughs> I-, I think she's talking on her cell phone. <laughs> I- I- Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. Well, now that, you know, <clears throat> what is it? 10 minutes gone by? Uh, something like that. Yes. Now I actually have the, uh, the, the email question of the day for George Takei. There we go. <laughs> uh, email comes to us from a gentleman by the name of Adam Stogner. Uh, okay, Adam, thank you. Uh, he says that, uh, George, uh, he understands you have a lot of men uh, around your house all the time. It's not just you and Brad. And <laughs> uh, it was like I said at the top of the show, it's, it's, it's like the Playgirl Mansion. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, his question uh, today to you, uh, George, is uh, he understands that, you know, with all those, oh, Really? Okay. Uh, with all those stallions, <laughs> he says, you must have cups of semen everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Adam would like to know, uh, George, uh, if you uh, have ever, uh, or or I don't know, always, I don't yeah. know, um, have you ever picked up one of those cups of semen and drank it? <laughs> Yeah, uh... every every morning. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. That leaves kind of a a lump in my throat. Yes. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, God, it's uh, ah, I can almost taste it. Jesus. <laughs> I, I I guess it's only funny if you're gay. I, I guess. <laughs> You know why, Chris? Because you're such a, a control freak. You don't want anyone to tell you what to do. No, it's more that I don't want to drink sperm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, thanks, Adam Strogner, uh, for that great email today. Yes. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a, a good one. And uh, oh, I need I need coffee. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Did you, you, you when you finish drinking the sperm? Do you do you, <laughs> do you do that refreshing? Yeah. yeah. I didn't think so. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, got something in my throat now. I don't. <laughs> okay, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, let's get the hell. Um, Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah, it is. But you don't want it in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
Well, we've been telling you on this show uh, for, well, pretty much close to a year now. Yes. Um, about the uh, the labs that have been doing all sorts of, of failures with, uh, you know, bio, bio terror things like, oh, I don't know, Ebola. <laughs> <you know. laughs> Well, today uh, in our uh, stories here, a lab has been cited for serious security failures in research with bioterror germs. Yes, another one of the 750,000 labs in the country. (laughs) Yes, amid concerns about the uh, potential of a laboratory insider unleashing deadly bioterror pathogens on the public... President Obama ordered greater scrutiny of workers with access to the riskiest microbes five years ago. The goal of the resulting regulations was to prevent something like the 2001 anthrax letter attacks, or worse, from happening yet again. Federal regular... Still got that glass of sperm in my mind. I can't <laughs> Federal regulators have secretly threatened to resolve, uh, revoke the permits, actually, of study of bioterror pathogens from at least six labs, including three operated by Birming, Burning, Burning, Brigham. Oh, my God. It's bloody CEOs in here handing me notes and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I won't forget to write from Florida, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I'll even send pictures of me and the uh, the blonde and the brunette there. <laughs> yeah, so back to the damn story. Federal regulators have secretly threatened to revoke permits to study bioterror pathogens from at least six labs, including those operated by Brigham Young University in Utah and the University of Hawaii, Manoa and the California Department of Public Health because they failed to take required actions to assess the behavior. Still in my throat, man. uh... (laughs) How about we make a little deal? Yes. How about no more gay stuff here? (laughs) Yes, uh, because they failed to take required actions to assess the behavior and trustworthiness of their workers, plus other kinds of safety violations, records obtained by a show. In a letter to Brigham Young University, regulators said last year that they had significant concerns whether its lab staff could work with potential bioterror pathogens in a manner which does not endanger public health and safety. California's health department lab in Richmond allowed unapproved staff to have key cards and let them into restricted areas and failed to address safety issues over the course of the last four years, the regulators told the lab. The University of Hawaii, Manoa, was called out by regulators in another letter to the government, and the university tried to keep it secret for widespread regulatory noncompliance and a serious disregard for regulations of security, biosafety, incident response, and training. Issues included failures to implement suitability assessments of key lab staff, installing a security system, but not making it operational. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, apparently the lab staff didn't understand how to use the respiratory protection at all and needed to prevent exposure to infectious agents. Officials at the three sanctioned labs that we were able to identify refused to be interviewed, but said in emails to us that the cited violations have been corrected. Brigham Young officials said their lab security and other violations involved in administrative and paperwork issues, such as simply failing to have language in their records documenting their procedures. We're working to identify the other three labs. Those names were removed from the letters federal lab regulators released under the Freedom of Information Act. How significant the security violations are is unclear because so much of the oversight of the labs working with select agents the government's term for potential bioterror pathogens, such as those that cause anthrax, plague, and botulism, is cloaked in secrecy. The lab regulators at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention refuse to answer questions. The Federal Select Agent Program, jointly run by the CDC and the U.S. Department of Agriculture, refused to release the names of more than 100 labs that have faced enforcement actions for a wide range of safety violations since 2003, even those kicked out of the Select Agent Program. The program cites a 2002 bioterrorism law as justification for redacting lab names from records released to us. 
The news organization has identified several of the labs through its reporting. The lack of public information makes it difficult to gauge the risks posed by the violations and whether federal inspectors are focusing on issues that have a I, a real impact on improving safety and security, says biosecurity experts and policymakers. It's hard to say how this should be interpreted, said Gigi Quick Grovenall at the UPMC Center for Health Security. What? PP Quick Grovenall. <laughs> <laughs> PP Quick Grovenall. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yes, at the UPMC Center for Health Security, a think tank, when asked about the suitability assessment violations of the Utah, Hawaii, and California labs, Grove Knoll said that she's long heard complaints from labs that inspectors focus on paperwork and minutia, but it's difficult to know what... They're, they're dealing with biochemical and biogerm agents. Everything is minutia. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the bipartisan leaders of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, which has held two hearings in lab safety and oversight in the past year, said that they're continuing their investigation to find root causes and solutions to safety incidents at U.S. research facilities. Among the high-profile blunders was the discovery this past spring that the U.S. Army Biodefense Lab had mistakenly been shipping hundreds of live anthrax specimens as it told recipients had been killed for more than a, a decade despite inspections by federal regulators. The problems continued undetected despite regulators previously citing the lab in 2007 for failing to properly kill anthrax. After repeated inexcusable blunders with anthrax, smallpox, and other dangerous pathogens, it's clear that this system is not working, says Committee Chairman Rep. Fred Upton of Michigan and Rep. Frank Pallone, Jr. of New Jersey. The committee's ranking Democrat in the, uh, said in a statement to us, the, the CDC inspection released to us uh, by the California Department of Public Health, the only one of three sanctioned labs willing to release any inspection records, provides a rare glimpse into what lab regulators examine and cite during their visits. Though some violations involve potential safety issues, many of the violations cited at the Richmond, California lab appear to involve missing language in policy manuals found during paperwork reviews. Less emphasis should be placed on paperwork and more on the actions that assess and improve safety cultures, and some lab experts said. Sure, we need regulations and oversight, says David Franz, a former commander of the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infect Infectious Diseases in Maryland, but safety and security are not enhanced by nitpicking bureaucratic manual reviews, arbitrary inter interpretation of regs and agonizingly slow communication with the labs is not the answer. Lab regulators at the CDC are in the midst of a 90-day review of how the agency regulates safety and security at hundreds of public, private, and government labs working with select agent pathogens. This review was launched in July in the wake of the USA Today Media Network's ongoing investigation that revealed the government inspectors allowing labs to keep experimenting despite failing to meet key requirements on inspection after inspection. Lab regulators at the USDA, well, they're doing a similar review of their part of oversight programs that was launched in June as well, a spokesman said Thursday. CDC officials declined to be interviewed or to answer questions about their enforcement of the enhanced security regulations, many of which took effect in April of 2013 and require initial and ongoing suitability assessments of lab workers with access to Tier 1 select agents. This group of pathogens is deemed by the government to pose the greatest risk of deliberate misuse with the most significant potential for mass casualties or devastating economic effects. It includes the bacteria that cause anthrax, botulism, and the plague, and the Ebola virus and several other agents. Regulations require a variety of scrutiny enhancements, including evaluating unusual behaviors, incidents, or life changes among lab workers in ways that go beyond FBI background checks. They stem from an executive order signed by Obama in 2010. The Federal Select Agent Program cites the anthrax letter attacks in October 2001, which the FBI says were the result of a U.S. Army microbiologist as an example of how deadly and financially costly the misuse of a pathogen by a lab insider can be. Five people were killed and 17 others sickened. The contamination caused the anthrax letters disrupted businesses and closed parts of government, costing more than $23 million 
to decontaminate one Senate office building, according to the guidance document on the suitability regulations. The Postal Service lost about $2 billion in revenue, and there was up to $3 billion in additional costs to the Postal Service for decontamination and getting mail sanitizing equipment. Among the ways a lab worker could pose a threat, of course, federal officials say a person with ill intent infiltrates a research facility under the guise of a researcher to steal, release, or divert dangerous pathogens. A person working at the facility is going, blah, 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 frickin' blah. blah. <laughs> really? Okay, we got lab problems. Yes. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna sum this up so we can move the hell on. We got we got lab problems. We've got idiots working there. <laughs> uh, government's passing the buck, saying they're investigating. <laughs> yada 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 yada. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, and the health department has said in emails that it cleared into federal performance improvement plans in March of 2014 that the lab was waiting to hear from the CDC on a release of the plan after completing the last requirement August 5th. Despite the CDC's situation, the department said that it had been conducting the required staff suitability assessment since the regulation took effect in 2013. The department said the issue involved not having the assessment guidelines incorporated into the lab security procedure manuals the manuals have all since been updated, the department said. Well, there you go. The manuals are fixed. Everything's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, seriously, that, that should be it, right? Yes. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just sing the song, Ebola. Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's fun. That's fun. I, I like doing songs about mass death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, what the hell is that? I don't, I don't know. But hey, don't you worry, that's not the end of it. Oh no, we've got all kinds of lovely, lovely stuff. Would you like to take the Obama versus McCain quiz? Huh? <laughs> you damn straight, neither do I. Well, screw that whole thing. Um, that's it. I got a plane to catch. Yes, I do. I'm heading to Florida for the naked girls. <laughs> I want to thank the one, the only, Louis Lawless for being here today. It was great to have you, sir. I nearly got kicked out of a theater. I, went, I can't remember what I saw about two weeks ago because yeah. I was booing and screaming. Well, you know, quit hanging out at theaters. Come to Florida with me and Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, Gilbert, thank you for being here, my friend. Thank you for listening and support the show for the love of God. God yes. <laughs> Also, uh, George Takei, thanks for being here and not drinking sperm on the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good, good. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Now. It has been a fantastic experience. Oh, what, the drinking sperm or being on the show? <laughs> Well, uh, thank yous and, and how-tos and all that good stuff to Mr. Greg Howe out there in Nanaimo. And, of course, uh, that little-known fact about Mill Bay. I was, yes. was going <laughs> to gonna do that about an hour ago. Yeah, world's biggest hockey stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm serious. They have the world's biggest hockey stick there. I'm absolutely being completely truthful with you. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, it's it's big. It's like uh, the three hundred feet long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So get on over to Mill Bay. Check out the Tim Hortons. Grab yourself uh, something from Seven uh, Eleven. Get me a slushy. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, go have your pictures taken this weekend at the uh, the world's largest hockey stick. And uh, and just let let them know I sent you. Yeah. <laughs> Also, don't forget, gang, uh, absolutely, uh, Master the Mountains Contest. Get on over to Marlboro.com. You could be spending two weeks all expenses paid at the Marlboro Ranch. And tell them I sent you. Yeah, <laughs> 
Anyway, gang, you have yourselves a great weekend. Uh, we'll be back in the house here Monday. Uh, of course, I'll be reporting from the remote at the Florida beach. But, uh, <laughs> Get those cameras going and get some naked girls on this show. That's what we'll do. We'll, we'll get the gay out. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, gang, have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. HLA Radio 1, New York.